Ismail Madad and welcome to Careers of the Future, a show where students can learn from Ismail's leading in their fields on how to prepare for the future of work. My name is Inara Gangji, I am a student and I will be the host for today's show. Today we will be learning about working in public service with our special guest Rihanna Schwinninger Ladek. She's the head of Interactive Technologies, Digital and Education at the European Commission. Rihanna, welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Yali Madatinara, it's my pleasure to be here today with you. Indeed, I work in the European Civil Service and specifically I work for the European Commission, which is the executive body of the European Union, where I'm in charge of the areas that you mentioned, so modernizing education and training systems in Europe and modernizing the cultural sector with the tools that modern technology and collectivity offer. Perhaps a quick word for those who don't know what the European Union, the EU in short, is. So it's an economic and political union between 27 European countries. It's quite a unique setup huh? as countries that are part of it. Uh, we call them member states. They remain sovereign and independent. And at the same time, they have decided to pull some of their sovereignty uh, in areas where it makes sense to work together and be stronger together. Uh, so in practice, what does this mean? Uh, simply that in some areas, the EU makes the decision for all these 27 member states, like for our currency, the euro. In other areas, the EU shares the decision with the countries, like for consumer protection or energy. And in some areas, the EU complements the work that is being done at national level like in education and culture, which are my, my areas. So there are altogether 35 areas where the Union is active to improve the lives of people in Europe and beyond, like in developing countries. So the European Commission, uh, where I work, is the body that designs the policies in these areas and then implement this policy through legislation, soft law, financial support, and cooperation between the, the different countries. As you said, um, I had a department that is in charge of three big areas. So the mainstreaming of technology, such as augmented reality and virtual reality, the support to the modernization of education systems, and the support to the digital transformation of cultural systems. The overall understanding is that huge advances in technology bring untapped potential to the way we live, we learn, we work, we love, and we stay healthier. What we see is that societal change has always happened, but the key aspect of this digital revolution that we are in, you know, is how fast it's going and how broad it is. And this digital revolution brings benefits that we need to exploit and it has risks that we need to address and mitigate. So for my areas of responsibility, if I take education, for instance, schools have to educate and prepare students for the future labor market in 5, 10, 20 years. We don't know what the futures will be. We expect that the future workers will need to be highly skilled, for instance, in relation to tech skills, to digital skills. And we know that many jobs will have to adapt. Many will be replaced by technology and new ones will emerge. So the question is, how do we modernize schools and training systems so they are fit to prepare the workforce of tomorrow by taking advantage of all the technological possibilities and innovative pedagogies. Okay, thank you, Rahana, for sharing that. Um, so kind of building off of what you just said, why do you think your field of work is important? Because it's about the future. It's about making sure we do all we can so that you, young people, our future, can thrive in a world that is fundamentally changing. How did you carve your journey to where you are today? from your upbringing till the present day? Uh, I grew up in Burundi, in Central Africa, and my family is still there. It's an ex-Belgian colony, uh, so it's French-speaking. Uh, smiley kids went to French-speaking schools, in case you were wondering where my accent comes from. And it was a wonderful childhood. I'm really nostalgic of it. 
So, uh, for my higher studies, I went to Brussels. Uh, as traditionally, the Jamaat in Burundi was close to the Jamaat in Brussels. I did my master's in business administration and finance, and then my postgrad in actual science. During my studies, I did exchange programs in other countries, and that's something I really recommend to all students. If you will, you can go to another country, grab the opportunity. That is really important for your experience and future prospects. Also, if you can learn another language, obviously English, as Moulana Hasrimam has stressed, the importance of mastering English, but I would also say learn, if you can, Spanish, Arabic, German, Mandarin or French, depending where you live. Speaking several languages will give you an edge of, or, or, over others. So after finishing my university, I got a job uh, in a tech company. While I was working in this tech company, I got involved in an IT project with the European Commission and I got a temporary position, which I grabbed. I landed in a wonderful organization, highly committed, public service driven, multicultural, respectful of diversity. Well, as a young woman from a minority, I never, ever, ever felt marginalized. On the contrary, my diversity was respected and valued. And I discovered what public good meant. And during my temporary position in this organization, I understood better what I was looking for. I had known all along that I was not inclined to work in business, despite having done business studies. It didn't appeal to me. That was, that, that's the way it is. And working in the, uh, uh, with the uh, temporary position at the commission, I discovered what public service was. But to become, to become a full-fledged civil servant, I had to pass exams. In most countries, that's the case. If you want to join public service, you need first to sit in exams and be the top tier. So I studied very hard. I already had a family life, but for a whole year, my evenings and weekends were dedicated to studying for the European public service competition. And looking back, of course, it was all worth it. Okay, thank you for sharing your journey with us. So what are some of the challenges you faced in your journey to reach where you are today? The, um, the, the challenges that I see in my journey, but, and I think it applies uh, in general to, um, to, to public service, hmm? it's that uh, public service is now in a transition. So first, uh, we cannot speak digital transformation uh, uh, as, as so, uh, benefiting, taking advantage of what technology means and mitigating its risks and changing the mindset. So we cannot preach digital transformation and not apply it to ourselves. So we need to be faster, more efficient, closer to the needs of citizens when delivering our programs. Secondly, we cannot sit and wait. We are in an age of rapid technological progress, so we have to stay abreast of what is going on in our areas, how our different segments are evolving, so that we can adjust our policies and really deliver the programs as, as best as we can. And third, our jobs also require us to drive innovation, innovative ways to support our areas. I'll give you an example. Last year, in my activity on supporting cultural heritage institutions, I had to get the buying of member states, to push them, to nudge them. So I had to come out with a new construct that we had never tried before to get their, uh, the national government support. And I spent three months calling, discussing with member states, all cultural ministries, to get them on board. And at the end, I managed. So I had to show them what is the benefit of this new construct. And when I see here two years later, it works. So it's always trying out um, innovative ways uh, to get to get to your objectives. Okay, you talk about your role in today's world, but did it exist when you were younger? Did you anticipate this kind of career? I don't know. Yeah, the role always existed. So the role of public service has always been there. But the, the way uh, public service intervenes, changes and has to adapt to the uh, challenges of the time. So in a way, public service is always, will always be driven 
by public interest, by doing public good, but at the same time, the means that we will be um, using will have to adapt to the challenges and to the needs uh, we are trying to address. Kind of building off of that, what direction do you see your field of work going in? What kind of issues and job roles will become increasingly important or not? The overall, what kind of jobs? I think what, what we know, as I said earlier, is certainly, it's, we don't have a crystal ball, but we have trends that we see uh, coming. Certainly all jobs will require, in, the public, in, in public policy as well, they will require um, multiple skills. Uh, they will require to have more digital skills. They will require soft skills. Um, so public service, like all uh, tech jobs, are in a transition. And I think that what I see also is the challenges uh, that I face and that my, my field faces. What I see is that um, uh, as, as, as many public policy uh, makers who need high performing teams, um, that the big challenge that I see is to hire talents that have the skills to design a policy and to understand the impact of technology and to be able to speak with different stakeholders. So our jobs as public policymakers are getting more complex and more multifaceted. That's quite interesting to hear, Rehana. So what skills do you think students today need to kind of succeed in your field? Um, within the European Commission, I've been involved in creating laws. For instance, when I was uh, handling the, um, uh, the directive, the law for audiovisual, so what a public and private broadcaster and on-demand platforms like Netflix allow to broadcast in terms of content. I was also involved in creating public-private partnership in, in data technology. And now I'm in charge, amongst others, uh, of the biggest cultural ecosystem called Europeana that provides access to almost 60 million cultural objects with thousands of cultural heritage institutions. So uh, we, um, these responsibilities were quite different, but the set of skills required were not different. They were quite similar. So if I have to advise, what I would say is first, problem solving, critical problem solving and critical thinking. Public service needs graduates who can explore the root cause of problems, use their critical analysis skills to understand complex phenomena and accordingly design and implement solutions. Mm -hmm. Secondly, good communication skills, both written and oral. It's paramount. We work, uh, we write a lot of documents, policy documents, legislation, um, notes to, to governments. And at the same time, we speak a lot to a lot of different kinds of people and always with the right level, uh, right message, uh, the, the appropriate uh, style of, of, of communication. So that is really, really important. And third, uh, I would say it's the ability to work together in a multicultural environment. So I have teams with 27 nationalities and all have their cultural sensitivities. So you need to be aware of these differences to be able to um, respect them, of course, and see how we can bring people up who may have very, very different uh, sensitivities. If you take, for instance, humor, we think that humor is quite, you know, uh, global or uh, uh, international, but no, humor can be very, very, uh, um, uh, it depends a lot on where you come from. So that is, that is an important aspect. How do you work together in teams, in multicultural teams? Okay, so while we're talking about the skills that students might need, how do you think they can obtain them throughout their educational careers? What kind of experiences should they seek out? Um, the, all the skills, nobody's born with them. Huh? You acquire them, as you say. So you acquire them um, already in university. So what I, as I said before, try out uh, exchange programs because they will get you exposed to other cultures, other environments, other languages. Try traineeships, um, uh, placement jobs, it, multiply your experience so that you get exposed to different communication styles, different ways of doing it. 
Um, what I also uh, suggest is that if you want to go in public service, you also take um, drafting skills. Those are very important. Nobody's born writing and speaking well, but you can learn how to do it. So that, that, that is really, really important in public service. Okay, now kind of moving to something slightly different. What kind of values do you think are most important in succeeding in the future of this industry? So there is a distinction between the values of an organization and your values as a person uh, in a public service. So if I take that stance, the values that for me are essential as a civil servant are one, above all, public interest. As a public servant, your fundamental motivation is to improve the conditions of your citizens, of the businesses in your jurisdictions. You will always be driven by what is best for the general public interest. And those are always the guiding principles and the values when, when you design policy. Secondly, it's about um, keeping up the highest standard of integrators. There is no other way. You have to be exemplary. And you, uh, as a public service, uh, we, we are approached by a lot of different people, a lot of lobbyists, and you have to be, you have really to be of the highest integrity. That's absolutely uh, vital. And the last thing is, because we are spending, we are handling and spending uh, public money, citizens' money, it's accountability and transparency. Whatever you do, you are accountable for every cent that you will be spending uh, of, of public money and, and be transparent about it. This is what I designed. This is how, how I implemented my programs. And this is what it cost to the, uh, to the, uh, to the citizen. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that, Rahana. So our final question for today, where should high school and university students who are interested in working in public service start to get their foot in the door? Um, many national policy, uh, many national public services um, offer internship, sandwich placements, interim positions, short-term contract. Also, many local authorities offer work experience or volunteering opportunities and, and summer programs. But try out one of those. Huh? And, and, and most, most of us, which is what is very important, is don't be disappointed if it doesn't turn out to be a positive of all your best first experience. Because it's not always the case. Try another one, another organization, another domain. Secondly, if you want to apply for public service, and I highly encourage uh, our youngest smileys to explore such careers, as I don't think artificial intelligence will replace public service. For sure, it will give us more sophisticated tool for, for a data-based policy making and, and help us deliver services in a more personalized way. But public service is there to stay. It will evolve, but it is there to stay. So if you decide to try your hand in, in public service, you will have to take an exam. And, and generally, they are very competitive. Then you have to dedicate yourself to studying and preparing it. Sometimes you can enroll in classes that prepare you to such exams. They can be a bit expensive, but it's worth the investment. When, when I was a child growing up in my beloved Burundi, I, I never ever dreamed of working for the, uh, for the European Commission. But here I am, you know, thanks to, to hard work, a bit of luck, and most of all, no less blessings. Rihanna, thank you for joining us today and for sharing your experience and life with us and with students from around the globe. Inara, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And um, I just want to know, I just want to say to, uh, to, yes, to the young students who are listening to me, try, try your luck with public service. It's really worth it. Thank you, Rahana, for joining us today and for sharing your knowledge with me and with students from all across the globe. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned to The Smiley to learn more from leaders in their fields about how their industries are being shaped by the future of work. Stay tuned for more episodes of Careers of the Future. Thank you.